Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the fourth installment of the First Citizens Asset Management Limited Six Step to Financial Freedom Program. Again, I am Nadira Sipasad, the Senior Marketing Officer at First Citizens Asset Management Limited and I will be your facilitator for today's webinar. The aim of this six session program is to build investor confidence through a series of financial literacy webinars which shall encompass both savings as well as investments. The program is not designed to sell the products of First Citizens, but created to educate and inform the public of the need to take control of their own finances. First Citizens Asset Management Limited started its financial literacy drive in 2005 through hosting a series of seminars throughout Trinidad and Tobago, and the program has now grown to include personal meetings with corporations and now the newest edition financial webinars. Just to recap the previous sessions for those who were with me and those who are now joining me, Session 1 focused on the fundamentals of savings and investments. Session 2 gave a better understanding of the risks attached to investments and savings. The third webinar, webinar gave financial tips on financial planning by life stages. And today's webinar is a brief overview of credit management. Today's webinar will be 30 minutes in length, with 20 minutes presentation time and 10 minutes to answer any questions submitted. To submit questions, please type it in the question window in your control panel. This can be seen to the right of your viewing window. If you do not see your control panel, please click on the red arrow to expand. Questions will be addressed at the end of the session. Two polls will be conducted during this webinar. Please keep your viewing panel open after selecting your pool choice. I would also like to advise that all attendees will be in listen-only mode for the duration of today's webinar in order to ensure a smooth flow as time is limited. This webinar is for informational purposes only. The investments mentioned may not be suitable for all investors. Please be advised that all investments do involve some degree of risk. When making any decision, you need to take your own financial situation and risk tolerance into consideration. Before making any investment, you are advised to read a prospectus. And at the end of today's webinar, you will be able to understand the need to take control of your credit facilities and why it is important to maintain a positive credit rating. You will be able to manage your credit card debt more efficiently and you will make better and more informed decisions when taking on a credit facility. Before we review the topic of credit management, I would like to briefly mention some of the benefits to, the be, to be derived from credit facilities. Consumer loans, credit cards, overdrafts, mortgages, etc. allow us, the consumers, to purchase items today with money yet to be earned. It allows us to achieve dreams and goals that may have otherwise been impossible. Some examples are our education, cars, homes, vacation, medical procedures, and the list can get quite lengthy. So today's session is not aimed at discouraging you from applying for a credit facility, but has been designed to assist you in better management of your own credit facilities. Credit management actually covers the entire process. It takes you from your credit worthiness to looking at the pros and cons before taking on additional debt, making efficient use of your credit facilities, and maintaining proper payment plans. And finally, you should aim to be debt-free pre-retirement and almost debt-free prior to entering any serious investment regime. So let's look at some of the factors to consider when applying for a loan of any type. For those of you who have been with me on earlier sessions, we examined the need to keep a personal balance sheet. For those joining me for the first time, it is advisable that you keep a personal balance sheet to have a snapshot of your current financial position. You need to keep track of the value of your assets versus the value of your liabilities to ensure that you maintain a positive net worth. When considering a loan, you need to look at how it will affect your net worth position. For example, when taking a consumer loan for a vehicle, there will be an entry on both the asset side and the liability side of your personal balance sheet, whereas when taking a loan for a vacation, there will only be an entry on the liability side of your balance sheet. 
taking a deeper look at the example with the purchase of the vehicle. Normally, for my clients, I strongly recommend that a consumer puts as much as possible towards the payment as well as the insurance payment as the value of your vehicle depreciates the moment you drive it out of the showroom. Because of this, the loan value may actually be higher than the market value of the vehicle, which negatively impacts your net worth. For example, if the vehicle costs $200,000, after the purchase, when you drive it out, it may have dropped to $180,000. Whereas, if you took a loan for the entire value of the vehicle plus the insurance, you may have taken a loan for $220,000, which means on your liabilities, you're now plugging in a figure of $220,000, whereas on your asset side, you'll now be adding only $180,000 thousand which depreciates your net worth by forty thousand dollars so because of this I normally advise that you put as much as possible towards the payment so that your loan figure will actually be less than the asset figure and so there will be a positive effect on the net worth when you take such a loan the second point I mentioned here is your debt service ratio your DSR if you are not tied to a mortgage, I would normally recommend keeping a DSR between 20 and 25 percent. 20 is even better to ensure that there is room for further facilities if necessary. Your debt service ratio is calculated as all your loan payments and other fixed monthly payments such as rent divided by your gross salary. Sometimes even if your DSR is below the recommended amount, you may still be unable to facilitate periodic loan payments. If you have a budget, this gives you a snapshot of your cash flow and it will also tell you what your residual income is after you've met all your li living expenses and so you will know if you'll be able to meet the monthly payments on the loan. For example, you may have only 10% of your salary going towards a loan, but your other cost of living expenses if you're pursuing education, if it is you have kids and you're a single parent, whatever your circumstances be, you may not be able to facilitate a loan even if your DSR says so. So if it is you have a budget which shows you your income and on the other side lists all of your expenses, the difference between these would show you what your residual income is and how much you can apply towards the loan. So that is another thing you need to look at. Having a budget will also be able to assist you in reviewing all of your expenses and perhaps rearranging some or even cutting out completely some of your expenses in order to loosen up funds for you to qualify for your loan. Also, when looking for a loan, it is advisable to shop around. Although your salary may be tied to one financial institution, another institution may actually have a better package suited to your needs. You need to look at rates, fees, there are hidden fees to loans as well, allowances for lump sum payments, the frequency of payments as well as charges such as late charges or early closure charges, especially when you are shopping around for a mortgage. So now we're on to the topic of your own credit worthiness. When you apply for a loan at a bank or a lending house, a credit check is performed to determine whether or not you will be able to facilitate the loan or if you are likely to default on your payments. So in order to be viewed as a, in a positive light to the lenders, you the borrower needs to ensure that your credit worthiness isn't threatened by bad payment habits. Some quick tips on keeping a strong credit rating are making payments on time. This is not only your loan payments, but loan and utility payments should be made on time as these are both viewed on your ACB report, that's the Automated Credit Bureau report. You need to keep your total debt under control, as I mentioned before. You want to keep your DSR, your debt service ratio, in check to ensure that you can continue to make payments in time. You should also keep some facilities open as a record of a positive credit rating as this is viewed as better than no credit history. If it is someone comes into a banking hall asking for a loan with no credit history, the, the lender then has no way of knowing whether this person is likely to default or not. However, if you come with a positive credit history, you will be granted a loan or granted any credit facility much easier. Finally, you should not seek credit facilities one after the other as this shows lenders that you may be unable to manage these facilities and that you are putting yourself deeper and deeper in debt. If it is you come to First Citizens applying for a loan 
in September and we noticed that you applied for a credit card with Republic Bank in August. You applied for a, an overdraft with RBC Royal Bank in July. We would start to wonder why is there the need for so much credit in your life? Is it that you're not managing your credit properly? And in that way we will see you as likely to default. So in that sense, you do not want lenders to think that you cannot manage your credit so you don't shop around looking for credit too frequently. And now it's time for our first poll, guys. And the first question that I'm throwing out to you, which feature do you think is most important in a credit card facility? Please select one of the following, low annual fee, the reward scheme, which is bonus points versus miles, or even the cashback dividends, or the interest-free period. Which of these do you think is the most important in a credit card facility? Please keep your viewing panel open after selecting your poll choice. And now we move on to that age-old question of credit cards. Are they your friend or are they your foe? There is no definitive answer to the question as it truly depends on the individual. Some of us are capable of having a credit card and we use it only in cases of emergency and maintaining a zero owing balance. Whereas there are some of us who see it as a tool to facilitate living beyond our means and paying just a minimum payment and facing monthly finance charges. Each person needs to assess themselves before deciding whether or not a credit card is the right revolving credit for them. In most cases, a debit card can work just as well as a credit card can. So let's look at some of the pros of credit cards. It allows for easy access to funds in cases of emergency. You can avoid paying penalty charges attached to breaking or redeeming from investments or avoid the waiting period when applying for a loan in cases of emergency. Please note that an annual sale or the need for a vacation does not count as an emergency in this case. Having a credit card can help us meet some day-to-day -day expenses until the next paycheck arrives. However, if this is becoming a habit, it simply means that you are living beyond your means and perhaps revisiting your budget can assist in identify areas where costs can be reduced. Credit cards facilitate online shopping. Again, online shopping should not be mistaken for online gambling, and online shopping should not become a habit where unnecessary items are being purchased simply because you have a credit card and you can make the purchase. Credit cards also should not be used frequently when playing games online. For example, there are many games attached to Facebook, which you can use your credit card to purchase um, how can I put it, grand items that put you in VIP or put you above the status of your peers on Facebook. A credit card is not for this. Wise use of a credit card can develop a good credit rating, which is positive when you seek additional facilities. Credit cards all have an interest-free period attached to them, which means that if you manage it properly, you can actually have a zero-interest credit facility. For those of us who enjoy traveling abroad, a credit card allows for you to travel across a, across a globe with less cash. And now to look at the bad side of the credit card. Having such easy access to additional cash can actually lead to overspending and these cards are usually tied to very high rates of interest. These cards are usually tied to rates of interest that are above the consumer rates of interest. When credit card debt gets out of control, it becomes very hard to regain control as finance charges continue to be applied as you continue to make payments and it becomes even worse if you have maxed out more than one card. For example, if it is you have a credit card with a limit of $10,000 and your salary is only $8,000 and you've maxed out that card, even when it is you get paid and your salary is less than your credit card limit, you are not able to cover your entire a credit card debt and in that way finance charges will continue to be applied because even if you put your entire salary towards your credit card your salary was supposed to be assigned to certain expenses so you're going to end up using your credit card to meet those expenses so at the start of the next month you again are owing more than you're supposed to be on your credit card 
And here are some basic tips which can help you gain better control of your credit card debt. Take a card with a limit that does not exceed one month's salary. This is advisable so that in the event that you do reach your credit limit, it can still be paid within a month or two's time to avoid continuous finance, to finance charges. Take a credit card with the longest interest-free period to give yourself more time to pay off the entire balance to avoid paying interest. By the way, the finance charges I keep mentioning refers to the interest that is deducted from your card's balance when you have an amount owing. You need to look for a credit card fees and a credit card with fees and withdrawal fees that are low, and I believe that this point is self-explanatory. Avoid withdrawing cash and doing cash and advances from your credit card. Unlike with a debit card which has a fixed charge per withdrawal, cash advances on credit cards actually charge you a percentage of the amount withdrawn. This applies to local credit cards. Avoid having multiple credit cards. Carry one card as bad use of more than one credit card can actually lead to great financial difficulty. And now after that very heavy topic of credit cards, are they our friends or our foes, we now come to the second and final poll for today's session. And the question for this poll, do prizes and cash to be won offered by financial institutions during loan campaigns act as a determining factor in taking a loan? Please send yes or no. Again, please leave your viewing panel open after selecting your poll choice. And now that we've covered both polls for today, I'd just like to go through some small tips to help you avoid debt problems. Insurance. Having life, home, medical, and even disability insurance removes the need to take loans in cases of emergencies such as fire in the home, medical procedures which are quite costly when done privately, or even loans to pay off debts following the death of a loved one. So having insurance can actually remove the need for having to take a loan. Having an emergency fund also avoids, also assists you in avoiding taking loans when small emergency arise. For example, if a member of the household becomes temporarily unemployed or you need to make major repairs to your vehicle, you can avoid taking a loan for this and dip into your emergency fund. Try to maintain one or two credit facilities. When you are applying for a new credit facility, find out if all your current credit facilities can be consolidated with this new facility into one loan, leaving you with one payment. And this usually works out to be much lower than if you have several payments, because sometimes you may have four loan payments totaling $3,000. And if it is you consolidate it all into one loan, instead of paying $3,000 in four payments, you can actually make probably one payment at $2,200, which saves you $800 a month. When, when and where applicable, apply additional payments, or when setting up a standing order to pay for your loan, assign a value higher than the required value so, so that the facility will be repaid fully in advance and possibly entitle you to a rebate on the interest that you paid. There are many more tips in managing your own credit, but due to the limited time for the webinar today, that brings us to the end of credit management. However, at the end of every webinar, we usually feature a product of First Citizens, but today we're actually going to feature the current Your Easy Solution mortgage campaign. The rates currently 6.5% for those who are wishing to get new residential property, 6.6% for those who are not new to getting residential property. For the 6.5, your GDSR, your gross debt service ratio, must be less than 35%. For, this, for those who are second or third time applic applicants, your GDSR should be less than 38%. The minimum loan amount, 50000 there's no maximum. The negotiation fee for the period of this campaign, 0.75 of the loan amount, consideration will be given for those in amounts over $1 million, and at the manager's discretion, you may be granted a 0.5% negotiation fee. Lump sum payments, we will allow two lump 
sum payments per calendar year, the minimum lump sum payment must be $50,000. And for lump sum payments, you must give one month's written notice. Early repayment is possible as long as there is three months written notice. For any further information on the YES mortgage campaign, that's the Your Easy Solution mortgage campaign, you can visit our website www.firstcitizenstt.com. So now that we have covered our presentation, I now open you all to ask any questions. I am seeing would First Citizens be having their usual Christmas loan campaign? Yes, every year we do have a Christmas loan campaign and that will be launched possibly at the end of September but I believe it's going to be early October. Is it wise to use a credit card or take a loan for a vacation? Well, I normally advise against both because as I said, if it is you take a loan for a vacation, on your personal balance sheet, you're going to have on your liability side is twenty or 30000 you took for the vacation. And on your asset side, you can't exactly put the smiles, the memories, whatever fun you had on that vacation. So normally, I advise that you use from your savings. However, if it is you don't have the savings, I will advise that you use whichever facility has the lowest interest rate, which would most likely be a consumer loan because credit cards are tied to higher interest rates. Does First Citizens offer loans for debt consolidation? Yes, we do. You may have loans at various institutions and if it is you wish to bring all over to First Citizens, that is allowed and we do give you, depending on the security and the loans that you have, we will offer a rate that is comparative. Are there additional requirements for a non-national to acquire a credit card as opposed to nationals? Actually, no. It's the same thing. If you have to submit a job letter and so on, you can email it, scan and email it to us. We'll ask to see a payslip and so on. It's basically the same requirements. However, it must go through our secured messaging and so on. What should I do? What? should I need to consider when looking at debt consolidation for a credit card? A debt consolidation for a credit card is no different from any other debt consolidation loan. You simply need to go into any branch of First Citizens, let them know what it is you like to do. You must meet certain criteria. I spoke about your debt service ratio. We would look at that. I spoke about your ability to pay. I spoke about your credit worthiness. These are all of the things that will be taken into consideration and as long as you qualify, we will be able to do a loan for debt consolidation for your credit card. What steps are being taken to ensure the security of credit card purchases overseas? Uh, unfortunately, Michelle, that is not my area of expertise, but I will pass your question on to the credit card center and someone will email you by the end of the week. If never owe anyone in your life, why would banks consider it bad that you have no credit history since you don't like to owe? The bank wouldn't really see it as you don't like to owe, it's simply that you never borrowed money from anyone before, so we have no payment history. We have no idea of how it is you would handle getting into a credit facility. You don't like to owe, yes, that's great, but you've also never gotten into a situation where you do owe, so we don't know how it is you would handle that, how it is you would meet that, because there are a lot of people who don't like to owe money, but they still end up having a very bad credit history. So that, that is why we would also always give preference over someone who has a positive credit history over someone who has no credit history. But for someone who has no credit history, we would normally advise that you start with something small, a credit card, a small consumer loan, and that in itself will help you build your credit worthiness with financial institutions. Is there a big difference between Visa and MasterCards as offered by FCB? First Citizens Bank, that is. The difference basically would be in the reward schemes as well as the annual fees that are attached. With the Visa cards, you get the bonus points, whereas with the Master cards, you get the miles. And I know a lot of people who have benefited greatly from the Master card, as long as you manage it with the same tips that we discussed, as long as you manage your cards, you do benefit great. But basically, between the Visa and the Master card, your bonus points with your Visa card expire. Your miles with your MasterCards don't. So that is something you might think about. It all depends on whether you travel a lot. You might want a MasterCard instead. 
if it is you use your card a lot here and you don't plan to travel, the visa would probably be better for you. I am seeing a lot of questions coming in. Unfortunately, I'll have to skip through some, but for those who don't hear your questions answered, I will email you. By the end of this week, you will get a response to your questions. You speak of making additional payments where possible. How does this affect an individual's credit rating? Well, basically, what it, what it does is it assists you in avoiding going into arrears. Because if it is you have, you're making prepayments or additional payments, if there comes a time when you can't make a payment on time, your facility will already be in credit. We'd already have excess funds from you. So it avoids that situation. So getting into those habits actually helps you. In this struggling economy, what is the best procedure to get a reduction in credit card interest? I believe the rate has been decreased recently. It was increased and then subsequently it was decreased again. So unfortunately, again, that is not my area. I actually work with the investment department. But I will pass all of these questions to the credit card department. in terms of granting credit cards to an individual strict enough to ensure that the limits assigned are relevant or a bank's facilitating individuals living beyond their means. I will be very honest at this point. I will be very honest at this point. We actually do facilitate requests that are above one month of your salary. You can actually qualify for up to three months salary which means that yes we can facilitate you living beyond your means and at this point I think what we all need to remember uh, is that lending institutions financial institutions mortgage houses and all of these are profit oriented organizations so yes we do facilitate that you live beyond your mean and yes we see many customers getting into the habit of making just a minimum payment and still owing monies to the bank but you need to remember that the interest earned is basically what the bank would be looking at so yes the bank would facilitate as I termed it living beyond your means by allowing you to qualify for up to three months of your salary but as someone who works in the investment section I strongly recommend that you stick to one month's salary as your limit uh, if I have Cash security, can it be held in a mutual fund and is it margined? If you have cash security, yes, it can be held in one of our mutual funds. If you use the Abercrombie fund, it is not margined, it is 100%. If you use one of our mutual funds with a fluctuating unit price or the U.S. currency mutual fund, it is margined at 80%. Uh, unfortunately, I have run out of time. I'm seeing a lot of questions coming in, but I do promise that me, as well as my entire team, will review all questions and we will send responses. If it is you have further questions, any comments or any suggestions on what you would like to see, we only have two remaining webinars, you can send us an email, investments at firstcitizenstt.com. To register for the upcoming webinar, which will be in two weeks, I believe that's September 21st at 2 p.m., you can go to our website, www.firstcitizenstt.com. I thank you for spending part of your afternoon with me, and I look forward to having you again with me in two weeks. Thank you, and have a good afternoon.